In this video we are going to talk about best things to do in Prague so before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. The old town's winding lanes and the eccentric residents of Prague's neighborhoods are living proof of the city's turbulent history. No matter where you are in this place, there are things to do, and what separates the good from the great depends on your interests and preferences. Even so, we're excited to take on the task of locating the top Prague attractions. After all, it is the main purpose of the position. Prague is an amazing city, full of historic landmarks that have long served as sources of inspiration for authors and painters, and it also produces the most well-known beer in the world. With beauty on and around every corner, the capital of the Czech Republic is a powerhouse of Central European culture. Here is the list of best things to do in Prague. So let's start. Number 10. Charles Bridge. A 14th century stone bridge that spans from Prague's old town to the Malastrana district and is flanked on either side by Gothic tower gates. 30 statues of saints, including the martyred Saint John of Nepomuk, flank either side of the bridge. Visitors have polished the plaques at the foot of his star crown depiction until the etched woman and dog gleam gold, according to many traditions guaranteeing good luck. This road was once utilized by kings to travel from Old Town to the Prague Castle during their coronation processions. The Voltava River is now crowded with people, making up for the lack of status. Along the walls are caricaturists, photographers, and jewelry vendors trying to sell their wares to the tourists passing by. Be prepared to avoid selfie takers who pause suddenly or pay a small charge to climb the bridge towers for a less stressful perspective. Number 9. Wenceslas Square. A gathering spot for political protest and joy that is today surrounded by fast food restaurants and retailers from around the world. This long, rectangular area in the center of New Town is guarded by a large statue of Saint Wenceslas, the patron saint of the Czech Republic, who is depicted riding a horse. The Czech name for it is Vaklovsk Namst, and it continues to draw large groups of people engaged in civil disobedience and public protest. In 1968, Jan Palak set himself on fire in front of the public to protest the communist purge. As Czechoslovakia gained independence in the Velvet Revolution in 1989, locals gathered to jingle their keys in the air as a symbol for the communist authorities to leave town. The experience will be enhanced by a guided walking tour that discusses the unique tales that these stones have heard. Number 8. Letna Park. A vast green lawn with gardens, bars, and skateboarders that looks out over Prague's old town. Get yet another breathtaking view of Prague by ascending to Letna Park. Prague 7 has changed from a tranquil residential neighborhood to one that is dynamic and full of hip restaurants and stores in the last 10 years. First-time tourists should be aware that Prague is separated into parts and allocated numbers. A large kinetic sculpture of a moving metronome can be found in Letna Park, the base of an immense Stalin monument that was demolished in 1962 served as the sculpture's original basis. Locals, dog walkers, and visitors from abroad enjoy the Letna Beer Gardens park seats and views of the old town across the Voltava as a post-work destination. Despite the wonderful picnic atmosphere, you are not permitted to bring any food or beverages into the beer garden. Number 7. Prague Castle. The greatest castle complex in history and the residence of the Czech president. The greatest castle complex in history and the residence of the Czech president. The Gothic St. Vitus Cathedral, which has stained glass windows inside, including one by Alphonse Mucha, dominates the Prague Castle silhouette. While there are guided tours available to take visitors through certain rooms, a free solo ramble about the grounds is frequently just as enjoyable. A few of the favorite sites along the journey include the modest homes of Golden Lane, the Romanesque exterior of St. George's Basilica, and the well-kept grounds of the South Gardens. Every day at noon, the castle guards at the gates change. It would take a full vacation to explore every inch of these vast fortified grounds, so decide on your interests in advance by doing some research. Number 6. Palak Lucerna. A cultural complex from the early 20th century including a concert hall, an independent movie theater, and statement artwork on Wenceslas Square. Tourists throng to Passage Lucerna to view one of David Ern's most divisive sculptures of a saint riding an upside-down horse, but there is so much more to discover. 
The passage features a number of stores, a cafe from the early 1900s, a preserved historic theater, a rooftop bar in the summer, and a weekend party that pays homage to the 1980s and 1990s at Lucerna Music Bar. The structure itself was created by Václav Havel's father, the first president of independent Czechoslovakia and later the Czech Republic, after it split from Slovakia. It is important to get to know both Ern and Havel because they both had a significant impact on how the city is today. Number 5. Vice Rad. A less crowded substitute for the Prague Castle but has its own neo-Gothic chapel, elaborate cemetery, and panoramic city views. Prague has no shortage of scenic vistas and photogenic panoramas, but the large number of tourists can be a hassle. Go to Virad if you're the kind of traveler who enjoys some breathing room. In addition to its parks decorated with statues, a serene cemetery, an impressive cathedral, and one of the city's greatest beer gardens, the hillside vistas are a plus. The Red Line, commonly known as the Sea Line, stops here, making it simple to get to the peaceful grounds and gothic spires of the fort off the banks of the Vultava. Number 4. Jara Simmerman Theater. The humor of the Czechs is well known for being dry and occasionally rather grim. This makes translating some of the most well-known plays and books in the nation a difficult endeavor, but Simmerman English Theater takes on the challenge with a wink and a sly grin. Imagine the imaginary Jara Simmerman as the most interesting man in the world of the Czech Republic, with a theater in the neighborhood of Ikov dedicated to recounting tales of his antics. For an introduction to this local legend, double-check the language before purchasing tickets because performances are offered in both Czech and English. Number 3. Old Town Square. The center of Prague's Old Town, which is protected by UNESCO, with picturesque landmarks in every direction. The Prague you've seen in images is on Old Town Square. The 15th-century astronomical clock, a mechanical marvel, dazzles with both its outward beauty and continued operation. Look closely to see that the twin towers of the Gothic Church of Our Lady before TN aren't actually identical due to decades of construction delays. The center of the cobblestone square is dominated by an imposing statue of the slain religious leader Jan Hus and his followers. For tips from tourists, bubble blowers, mimes, and other gimmicky performers perform, while the Christmas and Easter seasons attract enormous seasonal markets. Join one of the free walking tours offered near the northern border of the plaza to learn the real tales and traditions of this ancient hub. Number 2. St. Cyril and St. Methodius Cathedral. An educational and intimate tribute to the tale of local resistance to the Nazi occupation. Although this cathedral is beautiful, its association with Czech resistance activities against the Nazis in Bohemia gives it historical significance. The Czech Republic has three regions, Bohemia, Moravia, and Silesia. This building's basement now serves as a free museum with multimedia installations, pictures, and artifacts from past conflicts. Learn from Reinhard Heydrich, dubbed the Butcher of Prague, one of Hitler's top lieutenants, how a group of young Czech soldiers and dissidents executed a plot to reclaim their independence. Prepare yourself since the account is difficult to read, and then pay a visit to the graves of the heroic men who gave their life to help free Bohemia. Number 1. Rudolf Feinem. A neo-Renaissance music hall from the late 19th century that also includes a little-known art gallery and cafe. This old structure is meant to be admired from all angles. Famous composers sculptures watch over the front's columned facade, see their website for a legend surrounding the near removal of one. The rounded walls of Dvok Hall offer the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra the ideal acoustics. Under a glittering chandelier, the smaller Sook Hall occasionally screens films and holds more intimate performances. On the ground floor's bottom level, the free-to-enter gallery Rudolfinum features a kid-friendly, interactive art park and walls painted by modern artists. End your building tour with a light snack and an espresso in the roomy cafe Rudolfinum, located also on the lower level. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.